the studios of WTLV. This is First Coast Living. Welcome back, everybody. Does your student have a hard time readjusting at the start of the school year? Well, it might be anxiety. Dr. Tracy Alloway is a professor of psychology at the University of North Florida and author of eight, count of eight, <laughs> books. Welcome back. Thank you, Charlene. I think there's always that mixed feeling of there's excitement and there's nervousness and excitement and anxiety because maybe your your little one is going from a bigger grade, yes. maybe there's new people that they're going to meet or they've changed school. So isn't anxiety kind of a normal part of starting school? Absolutely. And that's part of a good coping strategy too. The anxiety can kind of you know, push us to do really well because we want to put a, a good face forward. But what we're talking about here is something more symptomatic, something where it's actually paralyzing or crippling and it's it's very pervasive it's it's math anxiety and a lot of children don't even want to look at a math book or think about a math problem because of this anxiety. So it's much different from the normal kind of excitement or jitters and nervousness that we experience. Is there a certain grade or a certain age that, that occurs? I know that I was doing fine in math until I hit like division and fractions and then all of a sudden I felt like everybody else knew what to do but me. No, and that's the interesting thing, is that math anxiety can come at any point. And as we will discover as we talk today, it's not really genetic. So a lot of people think, I'm a girl, I can't do math, or I'm just not born good at math. And so they think that it's something that, you know, they're born with, just like that commercial, maybe she's born with it. But in fact, we see from research that it's nothing to do with that. A lot of times it's the environment. It may be a parent, it may be a teacher, it may be just this idea of a self-fulfilling prophecy, that we approach something Maybe we aren't successful that first time. And so in our mind, we start creating a pattern, which is, I can't do it, I'm gonna fail. And then we do fail because we've kind of, we're, we're meeting that expectation, that negative expectation. But aren't some people just better at one thing than other like my niece is great at math but that poor girl struggles to write she had to write a term paper and I'm always looking at her like how why why do you struggle with this but god forbid she tried to show me math stuff I'm like oh yeah you're on your own with that or if there's no there's no there's no real reason why somebody you're just good at something over something else well, certainly we are certainly we can have more skills or more aptitude or talent in one okay. area over another but what I'm talking about here is this miss perception that girls automatically approach a math class which with the idea that they're not good at math. So where like, is that coming from? And that's a great question. And so first of all, we know there was a study done recently with over 700 girls and what they and, and boys, but what they found was really fascinating. They found that actually the girls would say I'm, I have math anxiety, I'm bad at math, but when they looked at actual performance on math tests, these girls were performing at the same level as their boys and their peers, the same age peers. And so you have this idea just coming into it that I'm bad at math, but the results aren't, aren't actually supporting that because actually they're, they're fine. Maybe they're like your niece, they're even fantastic at math, but maybe a teacher is reinforcing that, well, you know, don't try, you know, don't worry, maybe do this activity instead, or from a parent. And so we do know from research that parents also communicate their math anxiety mm. to their child. Well, I, nobody communicates, I don't remember anybody <laughs> communicating to me until all of a sudden I turn around, I was like, why is everybody so much faster and better? And then I think once you, and, and, and I think, but you, you, you give me the feedback, once you struggle a little bit, then to me, then it became a bigger deal. And it, and it followed me all the way through to college. Right. I remember just being so overwhelmed and not even being able to process. So what advice can you give that maybe if you do see your child exhibiting some anxiety mm -hmm. from whether they're getting it in the home or out of the home, how do you tackle that without making it such a big deal that it just adds to that anxiety? And that is such a great question. And that relates to a part of the brain called the amygdala. And, and some researchers call it the fear circuit in the context of math anxiety. And so what researchers did was that they were looking at brain activation of children as they were doing math. And they found the amygdala, that's this emotional center of our brain, but they found that when they would start talking about math in the beginning when they had math anxiety, this area would light up and the researchers called it the fear circuit. So already before even approaching a math problem, they were, they were fearful, they were nervous, they mm -hmm. were anxious, and not in that you know, positive jittery way. But, but is everybody the, nervous before a big test? No, and this is different from that. Okay. It's, it's high, sort of overactivation. Okay. So we definitely want to distinguish between, oh, I have a test, I'm nervous, versus that nervousness that paralyzes you and you just feel like these numbers are moving all over the page. I can't even focus and remember anything. And that is the latter part of anxiety that mm -hmm. we're talking about. And what they found is what parents can do, what schools can do is offer one-to-one -one tutoring. So the minute you see a child beginning to struggle or start disengaging, jump right in and say, 
like for yourself, was it what part of fractions are you struggling with? Let's pull you out. Let's work in a small group. Let's focus so that you address the issue before it starts escalating and the child starts developing the self-fulfilling prophecy. I know that when I would I would be doing well on a math test, and the minute I had the first problem, the first challenge I couldn't really figure out, mm -hmm. then I couldn't think clearly. So exactly. I, I completely appreciate that. And you've brought this book here that yes. you contributed to as well. Can you share a little bit about how you find that helpful? Yes, and this is my first children's book. I just signed a, a four book contract to look at dyslexia. Of ADHD. course you did. I'm so excited about it. But, but this book is talking specifically about memory tips. And you know, when we talk about math anxiety, one of the things from my own research shows that when you have your memory space, maybe you've remembered these math ideas like five plus five is 10 or seven plus three is 10. We'll keep it simple for today. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I remember that to this day. That's the order you're supposed to work in algebraic yes. equation. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well done. And but when we have anxiety, what happens is that that anxiety uses up some of our space. So we can't remember, like you're saying, mm -hmm. you can't start remembering. Please excuse my aunt Sally. These simple tips. My and dear so, aunt Sally. Yeah, by my. The way, <laughs> Good, good. Go there. <laughs> there you go. You still remember that. And I, and I love that. And so what this book does is give a child really fantastic memory tips when they're learning math. And so what we want to do is we want to automatize as many math facts as we can so we don't have to feel overloaded. So instead of trying to think, you know, five times three, oh, I better count this out on my fingers and I've, you know, I've run out of time on my math exam. If we can automatize a lot of that, then we're, we're free to actually solve a word problem. And this book gives us lots of tips of how to use our memory to do that. Well, great information. Thank you so Thank much, you, Dr. Charlene. Alloway. And of course, for more information, you can head to Dr. Alloway's website, which is tracyalloway.com. And for more information about the book, you can find that mm -hmm. on there as well, or you can give her a call at 904-277-0027.